When Betty Hemings was brought to Monticello Plantation, she brought 10 children with her and later had two more. We profiled 11 of her children in our other video. But now here's child number 10, Sally. I'm the NYC Traveler and we are in Virginia. Sally Hemings was Mrs. Martha Jefferson's half-sister, like six of Betty's children. This means that those children were half-aunts and uncles to Martha's children. Out of Thomas Jefferson and Martha Jefferson's children, only two made it to adulthood. Martha, a.k.a. Patsy, and Mary, a.k.a. Maria. Both women married. The younger one, Maria, died at age 25, leaving one child to survive to adulthood and to have 11 children, Jefferson's grandchildren. The other daughter, the older one, also called Martha, but sometimes called Patsy, had 12 children, with 11 surviving to adulthood, also Jefferson's grandchildren. Since Jefferson had no sons to survive to have children, the Jefferson name was not passed on through him, although one enslaved person would take his name as a surname. Sally was an infant when she arrived at Monticello in 1773 after Mrs. Jefferson's father died. Although she was Mrs. Jefferson's little half-sister, she was actually only a year apart in age to Mrs. Jefferson's oldest daughter. When Jefferson went to Paris, Sally was about 11 and stayed behind with Lucy and Mary. Lucy died in 1784 and Jefferson sent for Mary in 1787 with Sally accompanying her. She met up with Jefferson, her brother James, and the rest of the staff and enslaved personnel and returned when everyone came back in 1789. It is believed that the sexual relationship began between Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings either while they were in Paris or shortly after they returned to Monticello. The nature of the relationship was slave master to slave concubine. She was young and she was his property much like her mother was with Martha Jefferson's father. Either way, Jefferson and Sally had a relationship that resulted in six children. Unlike poor Mrs. Jefferson, more of Sally's children survived. By this time, because Betty's father was white and Sally's father was white, the children with Jefferson were actually more white than black, seven-eighths white. They were all very fair and were able to pass for white. According to family legend, Jefferson agreed to free Sally's children and Sally herself upon his death. Two of the children left before that. Two were freed. Daughter Martha gave Sally what was phrased as her time when Jefferson died, meaning she left the plantation to live with one of her children. Child number one, Harriet, died as a toddler. Child number two, Beverly, or called William Beverly, left Monticello and went to live in Washington, D.C. Child number three, Thenia, died in infancy. Child number four, another Harriet. She quote unquote escaped from Monticello, incredibly with help from Jefferson who gave her money. Her brother Madison said she caught up with their brother Beverly. Both of them passed into white society and married white spouses. They corresponded with Madison for a while, then Harriet stopped writing. Child number five, Madison, or James Madison. He provided much of the oral history about Sally and her children after they were freed. He was a carpenter, learning from his uncle John Hemings, and he played the violin, like Thomas Jefferson. Madison publicly stated about Jefferson's paternity in an interview in 1873, when he was 68 years old. He married a free woman of color and stayed in Virginia until Sally died. Then he moved to Ohio, working as a farmer and carpenter. He had 10 children, some of whom served in the Civil War. It is one of Madison's descendants, who along with other Jefferson descendants, that founded the Monticello community, a group of Jefferson's descendants, black and white. Child number six, Esten, like his brother, gained his freedom at Jefferson's death and tried to live as a man of color, working in Charlottesville as a carpenter and a woodworker. His wife was a woman of color, 
the granddaughter and daughter of white men, very fair. He followed Madison to Ohio after their mom died in 1735. He played the violin too and worked as a musician. In 1850, the Fugitive Slave Act was passed. Free blacks were in danger of being captured and sold back into slavery, deep into the South, making finding them and regaining freedom almost impossible. Because of this, Esten and his wife, light enough to pass as white, moved to Wisconsin, changed their name to Jefferson, and lived as a white family. One of their sons also served in the Civil War as white. Two of their children married white spouses, and the family identified as white. In the 1970s, the story of Sally Hemings and her children was still very much alive, despite the fact that back in the 1820s, the Jefferson family either denied the story or attributed the kids with Jefferson features to a nephew. A few flat out lied and said it wasn't true. But Madison had already put his story on record and a relative of Esten's recognized a family name in a book she read. After a lot of tracking down of people and more research, they finally did DNA testing and the nephew's line didn't match. But DNA of Jefferson's line did, making the possibility very strong that Thomas Jefferson had fathered Sally Hemings' children. Not every society dedicated to Thomas Jefferson's legacy agrees with the report. The Thomas Jefferson Heritage Society has voted not to include descendants of Sally Hemings while the Thomas Jefferson Foundation that manages Monticello has exhibits about the information. And the Monticello community is made up of descendants of all of Jefferson's children through his daughters and Sally, holding reunions, events, and continuing the research and history. The Hemings family and their story is an American history lesson of the effects and consequences of enslavement.
I'm the NYC Traveler, and this has been the history and story of Sally Hemings and her children. Thank you.